On to our second Nobel Prize in Medicine or Physiology. I always like to start with the medical background, give us some context. So in this video, we're going to be talking about malaria. Now, malaria is a doozy. It's probably the most lethal infectious disease ever. Accounts to up to a billion deaths throughout human history. That's billion with a B. And even now with global anti-malarial efforts, still kills about 750,000 people every year. Affects up to 200 million. Those are astounding numbers. Now, malaria affects the tropical and subtropical areas like Sub-Saharan Africa, Southeast Asia, South America. Malaria is caused by a parasite from the plasmodium group and has carried in mosquitoes, a certain type of mosquitoes called Anopheles mosquito. And that parasite goes from the mosquito's belly into a salivary gland and as the mosquito feeds, it spills into the saliva, into the bloodstream, affects the person with malaria. Malaria will then go to the liver, lay dormant for weeks, months, even years, making it very hard to eradicate before eventually spilling out into the blood. It can affect the red blood cells and erupt and spread elsewhere. And as another mosquito picks up that blood, it can transfer malaria to another person. That life cycle kind of repeats itself. When someone gets affected with malaria, they develop flu-like symptoms. They get a huh, fever, nice sweat, joint pain. Because it affects the red blood cells, it can cause anemia. The red blood cells can get covered with a sticky protein, start to clump, reduce blood flow to organs like the liver, kidney, and reduce blood flow to the brain, causing cerebral malaria. That leads to seizures, coma, and eventual death. And cerebral malaria is actually the most common cause of death in malaria. Now that's the kind of basics of malaria and its spread. If you want to know even more details, I'll link a video in, uh, below because this isn't even half of it. This isn't, this isn't even a tenth of it. But just knowing the basics is important because to defeat thy enemy, you have to know thy enemy. And throughout history, we really didn't know how malaria spread. Even though it killed a billion people, we didn't know how it spread. How did that change? Inner Ronald Ross. Now, Ronald Ross was a British doctor born in the Himalayan mountains near India in 1857. He was the son of a general in the British Indian Army. Now, at a young age, he loved art and literature and poetry, everything that wasn't medicine, basically. His father, of course, disapproved, and he eventually went into medical school. And when he was in medical school, he didn't focus on his studies. He focused on art and literature and poetry, everything but medicine. And he would eventually get really poor grades. His father, of course, was upset. He wanted him to join the military service like himself. And so he would take the qualifying exams and Ross would actually fail them and have to retake them. Due to his poor grades and his poor exam scores, he was sent to less desirable areas. Areas at that time affected with malaria. Ross would actually contract malaria himself in 1886. Now, what caused malaria at that time wasn't known. Uh, some people thought it was due to poor air quality. Ross himself thought it was due to poison of the bowel. A very prominent scientist called Louis Pasteur put forth this theory called germ theory that diseases might be caused by these microscopic organisms that we can't see. And that revolutionized thinking. That like revolutionized medicine and the way we approach diseases. And that became all the rage. People thought maybe this disease is caused by these microscopic organisms. Maybe this disease is. And so... Other scientists, start, other scientists and doctors start to think maybe malaria is caused by microscopic diseases. They notice that in the blood of people with malaria, there was these dark pigments. Could that be the cause? But how it spread was still unknown. Let's return back to Ronald Ross. Ronald Ross would be recovering from his malaria. And as he was recovering, he was looking at the wall and he noticed something. It was this very peculiar type of mosquito called the Anopheles mosquito, that, which we now know. And he noticed that this mosquito was freaking everywhere in places that were endemic with malaria. And he thought maybe this mosquito is how it spreads. So to test this theory, he took the mosquito, let it feed off someone with malaria, and then at, waited a while and then dissected the mosquito, looking for these microscop microscopic organisms that Pasteur was talking about. Sure enough, he found some. Could these microscopic organisms be malaria? Could these mosquitoes be carrying malaria? He wanted to repeat these studies and he let a bunch of mosquitoes feed off infected malaria patients waited different periods of time and then dissected mosquitoes and through those periods of time he was able to show the life cycle of this parasite that was his eureka moment and he was so overjoyed what did he do he wrote some poetry of course but just because he found that these mosquitoes carried this parasite wasn't enough he had to prove that it transmitted malaria so he let these infected mosquitoes transfer onto healthy birds and sure enough it transmitted malaria and in 1898 he would publish this work and for his discovery in how malaria is carried and transferred, he won the Nobel Prize in 1902. Hope you enjoyed this video about malaria, about the Nobel Prize in 1902, about Ronald Ross. If you liked the video, 
hit like so I know I'm doing a good job. If you want to see more videos of this Nobel Prize Explained series, hit subscribe somewhere down here or click somewhere here for another video of the series. Thanks.